Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the HTTP Security Headers episode uh, or the series. And this is our second episode. We're going to discuss XRAM options and the X content type options header. Uh, so as we uh, talked earlier, like you know, the security headers provide you uh, the defense in depth approach. So perhaps you have like you know other controls, uh, input encoding, output encoding, uh, your uh, frame busting code. But still, sometimes uh, it, it is possible that developers might forget to implement uh, such controls, and uh, that's when uh, these uh, headers will be more than helpful in terms of def providing defense against some of the vulnerabilities. So let's uh, look through uh, two more headers in this episode, and, and we'll continue this series until we cover all the headers. So as from option header, uh, what how it helps? So it prevents the click checking. Now, click checking, as we all know, is the practice of tricking a user into the clicking on a link or button that is other than what the user think it is. So as we can see here in this example, uh, the user would see like you know a win big uh, like a click to win uh, button in the back end like you know there's a there's a table or there's a page where it says like you know transfer the funds from this account to this account or what the amount is so one can uh, easily overlay or, or uh, I put an iframe on top of the existing page and make it completely transparent so the user does not know what's in the back end. However, they would only see uh, like you know some attractive uh, news or attractive text and they'll click on it. So this can be like you know people generally attacker generally used to steal login credentials or get like you know uh, permission to run a piece of malware, etc. So how does XRAM options prevent that? So there are three ways you can do that. One, uh, you can set it to deny. That means uh, the application cannot be iframed. So you cannot uh, have uh, like you know any page being loaded in the iframe. This is the safest option. Other option you can do is the same origin. That means you can supply that the frame can only be uh, loaded or iframe can only be loaded if it's from the same origin. That means the attacker cannot load the iframe from that domain. And then we have allow from domain. So if you have a multiple trusted uh, sites, so uh, if we talk about the internet or internal websites or a group of external sites uh, where you have multiple sites, you can list all those domains and it will allow the frame uh, framing from those sites. So these are the multiple. It, it provides enough flexibility and it also provides protection. So I highly recommend all of my uh, software developers that yeah, you should definitely improve, uh, like, and implement this header, so uh, your, your application cannot be framed. Let's move on to the second header, which is X content type options. Now there is there are a lot of misconception around this header, like it does not provide any protection. So here here is how it how I see. So it prevents the mime sniffing attack. And if you don't know what the mime sniffing is, so let's say in the uh, first we have to understand what the mime type is. So the mime types are any application uh, when you do the pen test or when you uh, see the response in the um, in the response headers, you'll see the content type, where it says text, plain text, HTML, JSON, or, or etc. So those are the MIME types. So for example, let's say in sometimes application does not define what the MIME type is, or or browser becomes like you know more intelligent and they say, oh, uh, we don't think the MIME type provided by the application is correct one. Let me change it, and that makes a big problem because. When, when the browser either changes or, or application forgets to provide the MIME type, then uh, like you know it, it it changes the entire I think the application response. So uh, for, uh, one of the example is like you know Safari browser. We look at the file extension, the URL, uh, and and says oh this uh, this extension is not suitable for uh, JSON uh, content type, which is in the application response. And then it will it will change it to let's say PHP or something, and then someone will like you know it will execute the code, right? So uh, that that's that's the easiest way to understand what the MIME types are, and that's how like you know sometimes also uh, application would convert from JPEG to PHP. So these are some uh, underlying problems where when not having the MIME types defined, or uh, even if you have, then sometimes browser do do make changes. 
So the risk here is transform non-executable MIME type into the executable. As we saw, like JPEG is not executable, however PHP is. So when the browser does it, then it's a big problem because there's nothing you can do in that case. And that's why uh, this, this header is most very useful because it, it tricks the browser that you do not change the MIME type. Whatever the case, you just use the one that's provided by the application. So, uh, and in that context, like, you know, the application or the developers will have to make sure that they provide the content type and the, and the MIME type for each and every request and response. So these are some, uh, like, you know, uh, two high-level headers that I want to discuss and, and see if you had a chance to, like, whenever you do some, like, you know, pen test, make sure you observe these headers and, and see if you can exploit the application without these headers. Uh, that will be a fun exercise for you as well. So thank you for your time. Uh, uh, enjoy this video. Uh, please hit the like button uh, and subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Facebook for uh, regular updates. And um, I'll, I'll see you next Monday. Thank you. Bye.